evening, folks. Welcome to the discussion. This is episode 359. And tonight's going to be more theme oriented. We've had Maya Paolonia on before. We covered his bio. Uh, I'll make mention of that in the comments section what uh, episode you can reference that if you want to. You might want to check it out. Uh, you know, definitely is trained with some pretty extensive masters and GMs and all that. Uh, notably, Ron Saturno, uh, James Keating. So that might be worth uh, that might be worth a listen for you folks and all that. And again, I'll, I'll I'll list that episode specifically. But tonight we're going to be covering the Spanish Connection and a really really unique event that he's coming up with. Uh, basically, never done before um, this experimentation, never in the 500 years of uh, and all this. And he's going to be speaking more on that, and as well as kind of what led up to it. We've got some questions in from viewers. And so if you're watching, tell us where you're watching from, smash that like button, and I'm going to be pulling up Mari Powell, and we're going to get this started. Hey there, how are you? Hey, Dean, how are you, buddy? Good, good, good. So I'm kind of excited about this. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned there, you know, in the opening, um, this experiment, never done. I mean, everybody knows, you know, whether the depth you know, obviously varying far as the knowledge or you know, research, but everybody knows the Spanish influence on FMA, but you're going to be really, um, we're going to get into that later in the conversation, but your event is really not just going to touch upon the FMA influence, but rather also Latin America as a whole, Africa and all that. And um, I think it's pretty exciting. Um, and it looks pretty extensive and all that. But before we get into all that good stuff, um, again, you know, what uh, was the inspiration? What brought this labor of love on? Well, you know, I've been involved in hoplology for many years. Hoplology is the study of armed combat, right? And how do you go about studying armed combat, right? And the more you look at armed combat, you realize that there's no such thing as a pure system or a pure style. And what I mean by that is a lot of us are caught up in this, oh, this is from here. This is all it is. It's never been touched or influenced by anything else. I would like to question that because if you say that's the truth, it means you've never faced combat. And if you face combat, you, you've not had to change. In other words, real pressure testing where heads are lost and you've, you've not had to change. Uh, well, well, we'll have different questions on that. Right. So as we were looking at hoplology and the study of armed combat, uh, of course, I did a lot of things in Southeast Asia. But, you know, you keep hearing about the European influence and nobody's really looked at how Europe and European blades shape the world, the world of martial arts. Right. I mean, all of us, you know, you, me and probably anyone listening here is in love with uh, some kind of Filipino, Indonesian there of art. Right. However, think about it. Did Asians ever conquer the world? Not really. The, the blades that conquered the world were European blades. And yet we haven't honestly looked at these blades and said, hey, what is it about these blades and this blade culture that allowed it to conquer the world? Mm. And I'm not just talking about one kingdom, right? Spanish yeah, yeah. were the first. You also have the Portuguese and the British, Right. So it's not one, it's multiple. And you can you can take that forward and say, you know, uh, all the way into World War Two, there were dreams of conquest of the known world. So this is not an ideological question about who's superior or who's not. But looking at the blade craft and how those strategies came to being and how it actually influenced the world of martial arts. So as we are doing this. I started questioning, you know, you hear a lot about, oh, yeah, the Spanish were influenced, the Spanish influenced FMA. Really? Are you sure about that? We'll get into that more a little later. But mm -hmm. are you really sure about that? That's what started me down this road, number one. And number two, one of the teachers from whom I learn uh, arts of the Mindanao, he was big into the stress. And at some point he said, hey, enough with Kampilan and this. Let's, let's also play with some of the other pieces. So that's how I got started. Right. Mm -hmm. So that and given history and given hoplology, we said, OK, you know what? Why don't we do this? Why don't we see how the Spanish were influenced and how the Spanish influenced the world? Not not the preconceived notion that this is what happened, because no, none of us were there. There's no way for us to know yeah, this happened or this didn't happen. But to say, OK, 
what kind of questions can emerge from this? What can we learn from this? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what can we learn from the interrelationships, right? So, so one of the things that I talk about is it's not just one thing, oh, this influenced this or this influenced that, but it's a study of, okay, what drove the mind of the con conquistadors, you know, the guys on conquest? What drove the minds of those after the riches, those, after, those who were pirates, those who fought duels and those who mm. fought for honor? So these were deep, deep questions on how the fundamental use of blades, the different shapes that you have, and how it influenced the world over. So this is what started it, man. You know, it was interesting, a couple of things you brought up. And, um, you know, I guess, you know, you see cinema, you know, Asian culture, you know, highlighted as far as films, swords and this. But, it's, you know, it's pretty, you know, and maybe as of late you're seeing some as far as the European you know, and all that. But you know, if you think about it, if you go back like seven years to 80s and even 90s, no cinema on basically European sword and all that. And here it is, and you, much to your mention, you know, this world, I mean, particularly using the Spanish, I mean, like the what they conquered and, this, you know, how they spread. It just amazes me that there hasn't been more in that. And I'm wondering why the Asian cinema always kind of trump that you know i think there are a couple of reasons but but let's look at a few things right if you look at the highlander series if you look highlander. at the old zorro that is all uh, pretty much western blade craft in many ways or the old jim Bowie shows from the 1950s you know the, it ran a few seasons <laughs> and that was basically black and white but but essentially western blade craft but yes you're right i mean but there's this whole uh, how, how do i say it politely uh, you know, the fascination of the foreign, the fascination of the unknown, yeah. right? And when, when you have a lot of Westerners making these movies, whatnot, you want to show something that is absolutely foreign, absolutely exactly. different foreign, and exotic. Away. Correct. <laughs> and, and, you know, then Bruce Lee helped, he was so charismatic, and then that, that started the whole Golden Harvest series, and the whole nine yards and then then you had the whole damn kung fu craze and then the ninja craze the, you know ninja in the 80s that whole craze of chuck no yeah remember enter the ninja show Khashoggi, whatnot That's so right. there's this whole there's this whole um fascination because not only was it fighting but there was this very esoteric uh learnings you know whether it's the Tao or the zen or buddhism yeah, and, you know, which was a far departure from the the Victorian Christian ideal, mm. if you will. So it was appealing. And that, that, that was approximately the same time that Buddhism and Zen was taking hold in the West, right? Yeah. You had Alan Watts and others growing in popularity. So it was the perfect, perfect marriage, if you will, of uh, exotic martial arts, exotic culture all coming together. So things fell into the background, number one. And then number two, this... Uh, woke mindset for the lack of a better word mm -hmm. right that there's this almost the self-hatred uh, that i'm seeing very prevalent in the west where it doesn't want to acknowledge anything right mm -hmm. and in america you know what you can't change history i i for me i have two homelands that were conquered by british and we kicked them out in both places in different ways <laughs> but you know you can't you can't you can't disown that. That's what shaped us. We got to understand it. We yeah, got to know right. it. I acknowledge it for the good or the yeah. bad, the ugly, right? You know. Yeah. And um, hope to do better next this? time. Why do you think those European European countries? So, for instance, England, Portugal, Spain. Why, in your opinion, why were they so successful in the conquering and the taking over and claiming these new lands, as opposed to the counterpart? Asia, like why? Why did they make a, a conscious effort in those countries during those times, as opposed to where, you know, me, I, you know, I don't know who was the power back then, you know, feudal Japan or John. I mean, why didn't we see that? We do, but it, but most of the history is written uh, by Europeans, and I, I think that's where oh, you see the skew. The like, look at Hannibal. Look at the Mongols. They conquered the known world, right? Uh, look at the Ottoman Empire. Uh, they almost reached India on one end. They were in Africa and attacking into covered. Spain, okay. right? And then within the Indian Empire, 
uh, from the 8th to the 13th century. They ruled the entire ocean all the way to Indonesia and Borneo. So I think I think you do see these conquests. You just don't see them acknowledged. What we usually see is the acknowledgement, uh, what started with, say, the Spaniards, the the Portuguese, and then the British. And it also partly might be that it's more recent, number one. Yes. And number two, they had better PR. Not yeah. only that, though, but the Spanish, I mean, they, I mean, God, I mean, they won, like, you know, cross oceans. I mean, they weren't just, it wasn't oh, like going to North Five Africa. continents, man. Yeah, I mean, Asia, Africa, Europe, Latin America, Northern yeah, America. Yeah, That's I mean, no joke. Like, you know, but I get, yeah, but much to your point, I definitely the Mongolians. I mean, yeah. And uh, we got some comments. This is, oh my God, I'm here for the eggnog. And play, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a funny guy. We got Brian Kanata, Terry Joe, and Chris Nolly. You know Chris. All right. Um, so back to the labor of love and all that, and, and just the fact that this has not been done, you know, you're which we're gonna get to more on the experiment, your know, actual the event and what have you. Um, one of the questions that kind of came in parallel is what is it? Well, and I kind of piggybacked off this. Is there a need for this? And what is the need? Is that a need for what? For basically for what you're doing here. So one of the questions that came in, you know, what is the need for this? You know, this is not for everyone, right? So I'm not in the seminar business, nor am I trying to get 25,000 people on this program, right? Mm -hmm. This is for the crazy few, right? Those who are looking for, hey, what are the connections? What are the roots? Can we understand what actually happened? Can we understand the styles and the arts that we love? what drives it right mm -hmm. and what were the relationships or what is the context in with, uh, within which you are developed right so if you look at if you look at the jungles of colombia and panama you know we have professor t Joby coming in and he's been studying a lot of the spanish manuscripts for a while and he's coming to the conclusion that a lot of the machete arts developed independently in order to deal with the mm -hmm. spanish problem Right. So when we think about influence, influence works two ways. One is I, I give you my DNA, if you will. In other words, I teach you my stuff or two, you oppose my stuff so much. You oppose the DNA that I bring in so much that you develop your counterbodies, mm. right, in order to deal with it. So influence is uh, I, I use the word influence very specifically. It means both these things. Okay. So. If you look at the spectrum of the people coming in, it's a very wide variety and, and some very, very rare arts. Many yeah. men, I would, I would argue most haven't even seen one of them, leave alone a, a spectrum of these guys. I think that's fair. Yeah. Right. So, so being able to see that and say, okay, uh, what does this mean? So why do this? So there's a very particular format that we follow within the Immersion Foundation, right, which is immersion. So now imagine all you're doing is seeing the Spanish connections and interconnections mm. for 40 hours straight. Now, yeah. most seminars run how long, especially in the Zoom era, it's one, one or two hours, right? So basically, you have 20 seminars packed in three days and nowhere to escape, no Wi-Fi, nowhere to hang out. Mm. You're in it, right? So, so what that does, a lot of, a lot of studies have been done uh, with brain sciences in the idea of this deep immersion. When that immersion happens, new connections form. You're able to not only have better insights, but hopefully the hope with our experiments is you're able to ask a better class of questions. Mm -hmm. And what those better class of questions do is enable better answers or the search for better answers and new discoveries. More information, more discoveries, much to your point. Yeah. You know, this had, you know, this had to be a huge undertaking. I can't even imagine, uh, well, not, I mean, physically you actually going to these continents, but in addition to that, you know, your meetings with fellow apologists, um, you, you guys going over stuff, the countless hours and, and stuff. I mean, you know, it's not easy. Labor of love, obviously, you know, um, you know, when I look at this and you're describing this to me, um, it, it, it just, it seems overwhelming. Like if somebody threw this in my lap, I, you know, I'm, just the thought of it would give me an anxiety attack. Um, <laughs> so, but what, um, so I'm assuming obviously overwhelming, you know, labor of love again, you know, it almost seems though it has to be this way because you're talking about different continents, 
you're talking about different time frames and all that. Is that fair? Yeah, it's overwhelming. Uh, it's quite normal for me to have 3 a.m. meetings, right? Uh, and then sometimes meeting going late into the nights and then, you know, discussing things. And then some people don't want to be with the other people. And they're like, oh, what's really your agenda? Why are you trying to do this? You know, what's your real game yeah. plan? You know, are you trying to put me on a spot? So, so you know, you, you, you have that kind of trouble usually. And then um, while they acknowledge, okay, things influence each other, uh, sometimes people are shy to put their stuff up in front of all these other uh, ambassadors. And I don't even like using the word masters and grandmasters because that's such an overused term in so many ways. But if you are good enough to represent your art and be an ambassador, what, what greater, I like ambassador, what greater yeah, honor, yeah. you know? So now you have all these people who are truly dedicated to their craft, truly mm. world class. And many of them, I had a few people say, but I've never heard of this guy. I've never heard of that guy. And I say, what does that tell you about one, your research and the fact that how much more there is for you to discover? And three, that don't always just go with the popular genre. You know, right. we get so caught up in that, those big names and man, and I and I tell you what, I can actually attest to this. And you know, and I wouldn't be able to do it if I had not done this show. There are some freaking gems out there, man. For one reason or another, they remain to be you know reclusive, or they don't like the limelight, or maybe it, you know, erroneously they were giving a bad rap or what have you. But there are some gems, man. I pull out, I'm like, man, yeah, where did this guy come from? Like, how can nobody know? It's great, like you're, you're like yourself in the beginning. I'm just like, what's going on here? Like, why is nobody? And you know, and much to your point there, yeah, it's like just because you haven't heard this guy, man, doesn't mean he's not bringing something major to the table. You know, yeah, I mean, you know, the kind of people I hang out with, right? And half of them, most people would not know who they are, right? But that's the reason to go look at it because, hey, if you're truly studying combat. And if you're learning exactly the same thing that every Tom, Dick, and Harry is learning, mm. where's your competitive advantage, number one? It's not really smart, right? Mm. So what, what is in your favor that's there? That's one. And then two, you know, if you, if you study things long enough, at some point it becomes alchemical, magical, okay? And that the people that you can really talk to and interact with about this mm become far and few. That's no longer about, hey, strike one, two, three. Now you start paying attention to, hey, is is the contact point at 30 degrees? Yeah, you're right, though. Yeah. The mid becomes smaller yes. and smaller. And, you know, but you just, you know, you just reaffirm because, you know, doing pipe, everybody's, everybody's like, why are you doing that? You know, you know, why, how come you're not just taking that, you know, God forbid if you were to go outside the box and look at something, you, you know what I mean? And much to your point, yeah. With these even more eclectic are set you're going to mention in a, in a bit i mean uh, the amount of shit i got when i bought first piper aboard onto, oh i didn't i, I know onto the, the first right, immersion lab right, right? Mm -hmm. yeah uh, i mean I, I got so much crap and then i had ed and uh, lloyd in the same room at the same time <laughs> you know so believe it was it you're, was interesting pretty brave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's where you know like yeah, Lloyd, yeah, I'm sure they and it, it grew, but but that's that's the thing, you know. You got to find these gems around, and you don't have to like them or dislike them. This is about the knowledge itself. Go, one hundred percent. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I guess. And also, I mean, on a side note, right? Slightly, I'm I'm going a little tangential, but it's important, mm -hmm. right? These different arts, they fire different. They fire different neurosynapses. They fire different parts of your brain, which means the way you develop is going to be a little different, right? And each one teaches you a different grammar, a different vocabulary of motion. Okay. And the more fluent you get in these different vocabularies of motion, the more you'll be able to find the commonalities of what mm. your human motion is about, right? So mm. now you're not caught up in the dogma of my style is better than your style, my yeah. grandmaster can kick your grandma's ass, right? You don't get caught up in that. Mm. You, you, but it becomes about, okay, what am I experiencing? What can I do? And where can I go forward with? I like that. I like that. Um, so here, here's the thing. Uh, you know, why do you feel the Spanish influence is generally overlooked? It, it, do you think it's, you know, just um, 
you know, bias, depending on, you know, the, what the art you're talking about. I hate that, you know, not to pick on FMA, obviously the show speaks for itself, how I feel about FMA. Um, but do you think there's some bias there as far as the admittance of just how much influence was there and geography speaking where it, it was? I think I think it's nationalism, right? Uh, mm -hmm. It's race, uh, another form of racism. It's nationalism and tribalism, right? Nobody a likes to say, okay, we were shaped or we were informed by something else. Fair enough, right? Mm -hmm. So, so you know, I mean, let me just take a personal example. I'm obviously from India, and you know, if you ask my grandfather, did the British uh, influence us? He'll say, hell no, we kicked their ass, we kicked mm -hmm. them out. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking to you in English. Yeah. Right. So, so heck, they did influence us, and I can't. We can't disown that. Okay. Right. So, I think, I think um, the rise of the firearm. I think Brian had mentioned that the the rise of the firearm, the changes in the rules of warfare. The that changed something a little, right? And this whole uh, idea of uh, Budo, right? Uh, by Budo, I mean you know the warrior way it being the path of enlightenment. This. Uh, in my opinion, this bullshit idea of a peaceful warrior, mm -hmm. right? Uh, 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 it erased a lot of it and the fascination with uh, Asian uh, Asian arts and culture. I mean, mm -hmm. I love Asian arts and cultures. I you know, spent three decades in it. Uh, but at the same time, we got to look at things outside as well, mm -hmm. right? So I think, I think, in my opinion, I don't think the Spanish arts are forgotten. I don't think that they're not acknowledged. I think, but it's not your regular Cobra Kai Karate school, right? So access to it is very different. It's not something that you could teach a child, number one. Number two, you're playing with long weapons. Number three, you got to be fairly... You got to have a fairly... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? You've got to be fairly intelligent to be able to go through the text, understand what it means, find the right people to show you what it means. And then four, you need to have the courage to then actually go test it out. So this, the, what we are seeing with a lot of the reemergence of some of the Western, uh, Western bladecraft is this putting together and putting these pieces back together, but most importantly, empirically testing it out whether it works or not. Right. So I think I think the in my opinion, my opinion, one person's opinion, please mm -hmm. don't take take that for anything more than that. This is graduate school. You you come here for you come here for polishing off and yeah. learning yeah. some of the things that you might otherwise not have access to. And and this is by no means shitting on FMA or my own Indian arts sure. or Japanese arts. It's it's just it's just a different level of detail. Yeah, yeah, no, no. And I think everybody that's level-headed is going to see that and not jump to that conclusion and all that. Um, you know, so, okay. With regards to you covering the FMA aspect of this and the Spanish influence, one of the questions that came in was, why is Stockton and the Anasano blend not included in your current study? Wow. So I guess we'll just, we'll just jump right in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know what? Let's just get the fire okay. started. Okay. Uh, so first thing, uh, you know, most people use the word Stockton FMA. There's a reason for that. It is FMA from Stockton. Yeah. And what they're looking for is roots back into Philippines to start with. So... That's number one. So if anything that we're doing connected with Philippines, it would make sense to say, okay, this is here, right? Same thing with the Inesanto Lacoste blend. You know, uh, Guru Dan studied a lot with a lot of people, mm. mostly from uh, mostly from Stockton and those in the U.S. and a few from Philippines as well. But but you know, as we've discussed in our previous shows, that's it's a lot more pharma. So it is, it is tangentially may or may not be connected. I would say it's not connected uh, uh, to the Philippines. So that that's the reason for uh, for keeping it out, right? Mm -hmm. Now again, even this experiment it doesn't bring in all the all the Spanish influences. For example, uh, so far we haven't covered Argentina. We haven't. Uh, 
Uh, we haven't covered some of the Mexican sable, the Mexican sword, and how the new Spanish armies was using the Mexican sword, or some of the arts of the islands, or uh, some of the more esoteric uh, uh, esoteric uh, African arts. If you start looking at the Mumluk books, you know these were these were the non-Arab invaders and how how they went into Andalusia and conquered it, and then they were kicked out again depending on whose side of the story you want to believe mm. you know these these are things that have not been touched upon yet or or the influence on the canary islands and uh the jogo de canaria and uh some of those influences or or the navaja blade so i think i think this is just the beginning of that experiment and and we'll get into more as we go later right so this is three days 40 hours how much can we do yeah, uh, instead of just giving everyone like half an hour you know sure. that's no way to learn anything you know so so guess, that's that's why no Stockton FMA. Sorry, guys, you're Stockton and, FMA. Vena Santo, sorry, it's a pharma. Hey, maybe down the road, you know what? Down um, the road, yeah. But uh, so I guess since you, you kind of touched upon some of the countries and influence there, so, you know, what let's countries of focus or what you are um, so so countries were really weird right meaning the boundaries that we know today are not the boundaries that have been there through time and these boundaries change quite a bit so so of course we're looking at spain and you know um uh, we have uh, we have at least three expressions of uh, different schools of destreza coming in from there number one number two looking at northern africa like i said uh, uh, looking at the Nimcha blade, the Nimcha blade is a curved African blade, and uh, you know that is what clashed mostly with the Spaniards. So the, the so the uh, so the interaction between a curved blade and a straight long rapier, how did that work, right? Number three, we have uh, Maestro Pac Curtis, who's going to show how the Spaniards and the Italians fought and how these two very different styles of blade craft emerged, mm. right? Then uh, going over to Philippines, we are looking at two two pieces one is uh, cebu we're looking at uh, uh, what i call asymmetrical weapons right where you have latigo y daga right mm -hmm. so how two asymmetrical weapons the asymmetrical weapons uh, came in and how that's influencing it's just to give a taste now did the spaniards influence uh, philippines okay let's answer that very little Right. Because if you say they influence them, what you're taking away from them is that, hey, they had no indigenous arts prior were to their no arrival. Yeah. Were, were there no pre-Hispanic arts? Hey, wake up. India ruled over the, the Cholas ruled over there from 8th century to 13th century. One sixth of the language is based in Sanskrit. Right. Your, your Indians just landed there and they said, hey, let's hug and do Kumbaya. No. No, is that Indonesia can. coming up? And, I mean, yeah. no. So, but yes, uh, Spanish became the de facto language. So you see the numbering system and the names coming in. And some of the pedagogy started to creep in. Uh, otherwise, if you look at some of the old timers, they usually like do like this, do like this. Boy, do like this. Boy, do like this. Not this, that. Like this. That's, like this. <laughs> yeah, not this, that. So you have that. And then Mindanao, you know, Mindanao, fascinating place, hardly ever conquered, mm. very, uh, yeah, very going on down there with those Moros, huh? Oh, man. Yes, yes. Mm. And, you know, um, Mushtaq Ali is quite a treasure and you know, he's finally agreed to teach. And, you know, I've uh, been studying with him for many years and uh, he's going to show uh, some of the strategies with the spear. The Panabas, the Kampilan. So you have to understand why they were not conquered. So that also is an influence because your strategies have to adapt. Your your fighting abilities have to adapt. Mm. Then coming over to the new world, looking at the jungles of Colombia and Panama, you know, the single machete and the double machete develop. You know, its use is very different, and how they move is very different. The geography is very different. You're fighting in deep jungles. You know, you're not going to be dueling boom 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 right yeah, yeah. Your, your, your style of fighting is going to change and you know you have uh, dr tj ob who's who's hardly anybody knows him but he is a scholar's scholar and a fighter's fighter just yeah. to give you an example this guy is the first guy outside of colombia and panama to become a full instructor he was assisting helio gracie in the early 80s Oh, no kidding. And he was acting as translator, you know. He's traveled through Africa finding rare arts, right? He's traveled through all the islands in the Americas looking at finding, finding 
unknown art. So he's he's a treasure. He doesn't teach he doesn't teach that much, but he's he's coming here. He's showing. So that's the next one. Then looking at you know when we look at the American Southwest, how did the long bull whip develop? How did these dons use that? You know. Uh, so we have Anthony DeLongis, who's been a long time, both the Stresa man and the bull whip man, showing those pieces. Just right? fascinating, the whip man. And then, uh, you know, we have the Bowie knife. And um, I am stepping up. I, I generally don't teach, but this time yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing sure. this. I mean... Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a, there was a reason I was not teaching because, uh, you know, trying to do these things, then it, it shouldn't become about you. It should be mm. about the art. And that was the reason I stepped away. But uh, this time, um, both my teacher and others have said, okay, we need to do it with, with one of my other buddies who's a fencing champ and a, a, a junior world champ as well. Um, we're going to show the Bowie knife and how, how the strategy is developed, how, how, how the use of it has come into being. Then we get into what I think of as... Um, the empirical, the rubber meets the road, right? Mm. And no disrespect to anybody else, but what I mean by that is two pieces. Number one, how did the Spanish or the Western blade craft influence Asian, um, Asian martial arts? So look at Wing Chun. So the transformation of Wing Chun with the fencing footwork into, uh, into Jin Fan and then JKD. And uh, we have Joaquin Marcelo, one of the, one of Ted Wong's top students showing that pure expression. Well, yeah. Yes, I know it's the other school of JKD, but yeah. you know, there's enough room for all, right? Oh my gosh. So he, of he's yeah. going to he's going to show that, and the fact that he's from Spain, he's also a flamenco dancer. He has insights into the timing and the rhythm and that Spanish that Spanishness, you know, uh, yeah. passion, as they say, you know, uh, the passion uh, uh, really well. He's going to show that piece. And then lastly, the SCA. And, you know, I had tip to Brian Kanata for this. Brian's been talking my head off about SCA for years, and I never quite got it, you know. I never quite clicked until recently. And then uh, we have SCA. So these guys put on armor, take blades, and fight full contact. Yeah, yeah. So... That? If there's anyone who's who's testing your theories out, these I are the really guys. Venture to guess, and if they are, <laughs> yeah. So so you know, thanks to Brian uh, for making that Ooh. connection and Where's making that, that happen. Who's that Brian? Oh, he's a pain. He's a pain in the butt, man. <laughs> but you know, he's a he's a great guy. I got he's a date with guy. him on the buckler. Um, but yeah, uh, he's a he's a he's an awesome guy. Hey, just so, for folks, um, not to. Uh, change but it, it, i guess it's kind of all interrelated here what you got me working on what i will be working on is it going to involve um i know it's going to involve the extreme crayola is it going to involve that colombian art too yes so so the project that you'll you'll, you'll be so, working on my team I'm with alex so alex buddy more that'll be just more for us to talk about <laughs> so uh the because I'm just I'm just so fascinated with this stuff. But uh, um, so the Latin arts, there are about a dozen that we are going to look at. Yeah. So so you'll have your hands full on my project. Yeah, but I can't wait because I'm actually going to get like the physicality of this stuff. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It, it... Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. I just went it was weird. It just all of a sudden just went dead. Everything was fine and kind of. I don't know what happened. So what I'm saying is, you you you're gonna learn. Uh, so you're gonna learn three things, right? One is hoplology as we do it. Number one, right? Number two, the physicality of these different arts with some of the people that uh, we have, and then finding some of the others who are still not found. And three is also unearthing some of these old. Uh, old documents and finding things out. People may say, oh, what's so hard in finding these old documents? Let me just, if, if I may share a, a related mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. So we found an old manual of the Kujang. It's an Indonesian fighting weapon. It took three international foundations, close to one year, one full dog brother and his, his entire troop of people, me and I left, and uh, um, Silat Mestro will remain unnamed in the inner circle of Silat in Indonesia is also a very high-powered lawyer to find this particular document 
revive it, save it, and get it here to the U.S. Yeah. And that was an that was something that took more than a year, year and a half. For a now for that's not the end of it, right? It's written in the old language. Now finding guys to translate it first into Dutch and or English mm-hmm. that's a whole different thing. And then reviving this 500 year uh, history of this weapon it just gives you an idea of about. It's kind of like, uh, in some ways, in certain aspects of my life, I feel like the, uh, like the TV show, The Librarian. You're going out looking for these yeah. weird things, and you're finding them, and there's a whole adventure involved, and then you bring that back. A much more bigger level. <laughs> but I mean, just for yeah, but, but that's the kind of stuff you'll be doing on the project, man. Wow, wow, that's it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so looking forward to it. Not again, not just for sake of education information but to actually get the practice these arts i mean like uh you know i mean like um you know and just to jump into it you know that's what's so exciting for me besides you know of course it's going to be incredibly educational as well um so 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 there's a comment there hey come on for 120 years the 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 spanish did influence uh, uh, uh the spanish did influence uh, fma Look, I never said it didn't influence. Everything influences everything else. The question is how much? And how many of us have actually jumped in and studied the Spanish arts and can say, you know what, I've studied it and these are the four points of the influence. But that's the thing we're trying to change. One thing is hearsay. The other thing, uh, the other thing is a deep dive and saying, okay, what happened? Mm. I personal, I mean, one man's opinion, who the hell am I? Nobody, right? Uh, my, ex- my experience is that in saying that it's just the Spanish, you're actually doing a disservice to the FMA. You're doing a disservice to the indigenous fighting, fighting arts that existed there. You're probably doing disservice to the Indian martial arts that ended up there, including the word guru, right? They don't use maestro. They don't say mestre. They say guru, right? Or looking at the trade routes, between Philippines and China. And are we saying that the Chinese who traded with the Philippines and so many of the Chinese living in Philippines had no influence in the martial arts? Come on. All I'm saying is let's expand the frame a little bit, number one. Number two, I think it's great to question things. It's amazing. It's awesome. That's the idea Mm -hmm. of these projects. But the questions we shouldn't just look at the easy answer and say, oh, they ruled here, so this is what it is. Let's go investigate. And that's what this is. This is about asking those questions and finding from our own experience whether this makes sense or not. I know this is not the most popular answer. and this is not. <laughs> so it's going to offend a few people. But here's the thing. Hopefully, it's all what it is. It's a hypothesis. You can always prove the hypothesis wrong. But to prove it wrong, you're allowed to do the work because I am doing the work. Yeah, yeah definitely. Like you're not saying there was no right. Um, right. And then so, um, so I hope I hope I hope that point is clear. All I'm trying to say is that yes, there's a reason that the FMA guys are in on this because of mm-hmm. course there's an influence. The question is how deep an influence? Were all the FMA arts just a derivative of the Spanish? I don't believe so. That's 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 what I'm trying to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, okay. You know. um, Okay. You know, we were talking about some things, you know, like some of the things you want to get across, you know, and we're going to get to the actual event and everything behind that. But um, you were mentioning, you know, contextual movement, the comprehensiveness of all this um, and all that. So what do you mean when you, you know, as far as the contextual movement in relation to this experiment slash study you're doing? Okay. So first, just comprehensive, right? So, so the idea that we expand our frame and uh, speci- being a specialist is good, but that's step one. What, what, what we are pursuing is being a martial comprehensivist. So where you can take a comprehensive view and look at all the permutations and combinations and say, okay, this is the smog's board. I know what's there. And based on what my needs might be, I'm able to pick up. That's number one. Right, and I, I've tasted that food enough to know that okay, this is what I'm in the mood for. So that's that's a quick way to think about it. Now, contextual movement, right? So a couple of things drive movement. Number one, your genetics. Mm-hmm. Number two, your geography. Number three, your attitudes and belief structure. 
right? So these three things come together and then they create a very set of specific movements which are, which are, which are core to you. Um, I think it was just a day or two ago, I was talking to somebody uh, and I said, you know, look at how there are certain tribes that uh, uh, tribes and people that I've worked with where they would just go to war almost naked with nothing. And I asked them, I'm like, how do you go to war like that? He's like, oh, I see my enemy. He's my food. I'm going to eat him. Now, that's a different mindset. Yeah, not this guy. And then, then say, my own culture, Indians, you know, like uh, the Rajputs, and they were like, hey, we have this whole supply chain and logistics arm to our armies in order for us to go to arm, to war. So that kind of contextuality is just one silly example, but, but it'll give you an idea of how things shape, right? Second, blade handles. Is it is it primarily wrist driven or are these blades curved and shaped or the handles are different that now you got to use your elbow and shoulders? Mm -hmm. So it creates a whole different uh, category of movement, right? By no means I'm by no means are we saying we have all the answers. No, but these are the questions mm -hmm. uh, to explore. So that's why the context and the setting of things, right, uh, and the contextuality is key as we take a comprehensive look at what is it that we study and how we study and why we study them, it's, it's completely different if you're doing A uh, as a weekend sport or if you're like, hey, I'm doing it for fitness, things change. Sure. Hey, I'm doing it for self-defense, things change. Yeah. Or they're actually studying war, things change. So that's why context matters so much. Yeah, no, no, I, again, yeah, well, you know my feeling on this and, your labor of love. <laughs> um, so I'm calling it madness, and yeah, it's. it's I, I think it's great what you're doing. Um, I, you know, again, you know, how many years, decades, centuries, nobody's done this, and you're tackling this. I mean, so kudos to you. Um, so what? I have, um, I have some good collaborators. You know, the ambassadors are being very generous. They're like, hey, let's do this, and you know. Yeah. A lot of them said no, and then a lot of them said yes. And we said, let's make this happen. So with respects to the event, I mean, you know, just to give folks an idea of just how vast your effort and what you've done up to this point. I mean, how many countries, how many hours, miles, et cetera? Et cetera. Well, people will be traveling about 20,000 miles to come here. OK, many of the teachers don't teach publicly. Mm. OK, many of the guys are you know, just behind the scenes most of the time, but they're stepping forward and saying, let's do this, right? It's taken a lot of time, a lot of effort to get this done. And you know what? I would be amiss, uh, I would be amiss and um, I'd be wrong if I didn't acknowledge the contribution of one of my teachers, Mushtaq Ali Al Ansari, who's been instrumental in opening my eyes to many of these questions, mm. right? and uh, encouraging me saying, okay, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. So yeah, so in all, we have about 15 ambassadors coming in. Some don't, some don't even like to talk to others and they're still, so they still managed to use it You know, you yeah. back. Uh, just... <laughs> at, least, at least two of them didn't even want that picture on the website. I said, hey, I need to put your picture there, you know? So it's, it's kind of funny, you know, but, um, but there's enough love and respect among each, us to say, okay, you know what, I'm going to do this because I know there's no agenda and we are honestly exploring this. And this is why this is not a seminar circuit, right? Mm -hmm. I don't repeat things and we do this and we'll move on to the, to the next piece. And, and quite frankly, you know, you walk into the door and the door closes, you're late. I don't open the door again, right? So the door closes at 7 a.m. and it'll open at 10 p.m. And we're just going to be immersed in this, uh, just completely immersed in this. How many? Okay, so again, how many? Um, how many different countries are coming? Reps from ambassadors from the countries. How many countries involved? Well, you have Spain, like two, three people from Spain. You have the African arts that are uh, from Northern Africa, but the representatives are coming from Canada, you mm -hmm. from Colombia, Panama. Then we have the Filipino arts who are here, but and then you have the Spanish Italian arts. So you have people from a, a whole bunch of countries coming. It's kind of hard to say, oh, it's just here, there. You know? but, but the folks that you do have coming that are slated, pretty much definitive. Yes, it is definitive. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 I um, I I wouldn't put that up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the way I did, if if it was not. So, okay. Actual then. Two days. Three days. Three days. Okay. Friday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday. So you're looking at. I, I say 12 hours, but it usually ends up being 14, 15 hours. I think a few people like Brian have experienced. Brian was there at the first experiment that uh, we did with Legacy of the Blade. How did he and get in? How did he get in? I, I made the mistake. You know, hey, now, now I'm smart. My pal happens to the best of us. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, you know, it's like, it's funny because when we, the event closed, people were refusing to leave. They were still hanging out outside and oh, still yeah, working yeah, out, yeah. people working out in lunch breaks. See, that's the, the beauty of when you're immersed in it, right? And you forget the rest of the world, that, that yeah, magic no, happens. Like you said, no cell phones. Yeah, I, I don't love recording. I don't love photographs. I'm like, yeah. forget all of that. Just just come and do no your stuff. Enjoy yeah. yourself, you know? Yeah. I mean, see, these days we hardly get opportunities to do that. So, so when we get that opportunity to do that, it, I think it's quite special. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, it's just like the norm. You don't even realize it's a norm because you're just so yeah. caught up. In doing it. yes, it's funny. Last time uh, there was one guy who's like, oh, I have to step out. I have to check my phone. I have to check my phone. I'm like, dude, relax. <laughs> I know. It's like, gosh, you know what I mean? It's like, Jesus. Yeah. Um, so, okay. One of the questions that came in was, um, so how many guests are you having? What's the number? By guests, you mean instructors or students? Uh, no, actual attendees. So I, I'm capping at 25. 25. So I'm capping at 25. Okay. No, 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 no. Because the reason is what we have found is uh, any bigger than that, then the the ambassadors will stick to only small basics, right? Okay. Because they have to make sure all these guys get it. So if you have about 25 people, it's 12 pairs working. It's pretty easy to spot and watch and go deep into the work. So, okay, you have 15 or so instructors, 25 attendees. Is it, are there going to be a couple of instructors at the same time? Or is it? How oh, no, 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 no. No, so only one, one, only one teacher teaches. And yeah. usually what also happens is, is all the teachers stand there, watch. And many a times you have people, many of the instructors jumping in. Like Mark Denny would jump in and practice. Oh, Martin Dila would jump in and practice. TJ would jump in and practice. Yeah. Steven would Blink not take would advantage of that. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. So, so most people jump in and practice. And then some some ambassadors are like, nah, I don't want to practice this. I'll just stand. But they, they all stand there. But watch. they're just watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that's that's entirely up to them. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So that's, that's kind of neat. I mean, right. So, you know, you are getting that time you know you don't have to worry about oh man do i pick him or anything i mean everybody's getting that opportunity on them that's awesome so yeah what is the criteria for you selecting the people uh just trying to just trying to pick as diverse a group as possible right we'll have two three people who have less than three years experience and then we usually have a few people like i think last time we had two guys with over 50 years of experience mm. right because they ask very different class of questions number one mm. and number two when you have this wide range of uh, skill sets available it also draws something very different from the ambassadors so mm. so so that's 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 how that's how we're looking at things that's understandable right if you're bringing in and nothing against folks who are just coming into their journey for example yeah. if you're bringing in guys you know months or a year yeah absolutely i could see that you know how that's going to we got prompt the questions or just the overall energy and dynamic, you know? Yeah. And yeah. And then everything, you know, like I've had guys who do ninjutsu to guys who have done koryus to, you know, masters and grandmasters of arts and the whole thing. Oh, wow. 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 Okay. Another question came in, will there be a zoom session for it? I don't think so. You know, so uh, because the idea is around immersion, number one. And number two, if I do have a Zoom session, I'm going to have to sit on the Zoom to make sure all the customers are happy. There's one more thing you're going to have to do, check on, monitor. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those few rare occasions I get to have a little fun. <laughs> so yeah, right. no, 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 I, well, sure. I, I don't, 
I don't foresee that happening. And I think, you know, uh, I, I understand, you know, not everyone can travel. I not get that. Travel, yeah. yeah. And, you know, there might be visa issues. As well. I get that. Um, it's just not on the cards at the moment, guys. Yeah. Um, and also, I mean, are you really going to want to be in front of a Zoom for 14 hours a day? That'd be tough, to be honest. Yeah. For, for, well, I mean, for me, some folks could, maybe can do it. Yeah, some folks can. I don't know. I I, I, don't I, 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 I couldn't, uh, to be honest. Um, yeah. Now, folks should understand, you are part of this 15. You are actually going to be teaching Bowie Knife, right? Yeah. So let's, uh, what do you hope to, in your goal, what are your goals? I mean, what do you hope to, as far as the, your audience, like you want them to walk away with? With the Bowie Knife, you mean? Correct. Look, one of the things that's hardly acknowledged is American Bladecraft. Mm. Right. And yet this this was, in my in my opinion, the last great bladecraft of the world. Right. And with the pioneers coming in, and you had you had all the three major countries, the French, the Italians, and the Spanish, who had set up stuff in Louisiana, and it led to the a very particular development of fighting. Mm. Number one. Number two, the blade and the blade design is pretty unique. Number three, we're a culture that loves to damn fight. And, you know, I mean, as we've, we've been doing our research, we've been finding we've had senators who drew a buoy knife in the damn capital. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a fact. Tax. There were definitely tax back in those days, man, in the Senate House. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it was one of the few weapons that were banned in the United States. Um, imagine that. I mean, they didn't ban guns. They banned a damn buoy knife for a good reason. Right. So what I'm hoping to accomplish, quite frankly, is, hey, the, the arts were almost lost. Right. Mm. I studied with James Keating for a number of years. And so has uh, so has Dexter Mix. What we're hoping is to the work that him and Bagwell did and some of the others as well. Right. That I've done to unearth and uh, unpack what the code behind the buoy fighting was. We start to show that. So what I hope to accomplish is show some of that, show the, the so-called back cut and the mystery of the black cut. Then then you have the plays and master plays. How does that how how do you do the setups? What is called the, the nature of the true timing? How is that distance measured? Uh, those are some of the things I'm hoping to uh, play Between with and experiment, you know, uh, with with the Bowie knife. You know, Bill Bill McGrath and I would discuss the buoy quite a bit, and once I just remember him, him asking me, "Oh, about the back cut," and he's like, "Oh, show me what I you know, mean." It's and like the famous back cut, you know. Like yeah. So then uh, he's like, "Hey, is that a live blade?" I said, "Yeah, this is a live blade." So I'm showing him some of the stuff. It's just, so it's fun, you know. Big, so I, yeah. I think I think I think um, American bladecraft doesn't get the credit no i think again back to that whole the asian thing and uh, i mean you know but it's such a big scary knife man it's just like yeah and i mean if you handle if you've handled a, say a bagwell buoy the damn thing just seeks blood it just flies you know and uh and mm, you you, you got to make sure you know how to make it fly right because it's gonna fly you know yeah. <laughs> Ugh, man, yeah, enough. so that's awesome. It makes, it makes, let's just say you pull out a buoy knife, it makes a damn statement. <laughs> uh, I would think so, yeah. I got my four inch folder, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so I'm just hoping that you know, I mean, uh, I'm hoping that um, I can get people to look at it, appreciate it. And, you know, find some of the last sources around who still actually teach it, you know, uh, go great. there, learn it, explore it, you know, because, uh, you know, as you know, one of the big things that drove my immersion projects is so many of these arts that I so dearly love are going to sunset in my lifetime, you know? No, I know. That's a scary thought. So we're just going to disappear because nobody's going yeah. to carry them on or no lineage and it's that is a very very sad depressing thought um so hopefully you know a few more people you know maybe there's another two three crazy guys who will fall in love with it and keep that that mythology alive and i'm using the word mythology very specifically it's not just stories but this mythology of movement what was done how it was done mm -hmm. and, you know people people be you know one thing i i do want to emphasize the buoy knife 
a lot of people have done it a lot of disservice making it sound like it's some white supremacist slave owning uh, mm. art these guys are lazy fucking lazy they don't do their research don't know what they're talking about and they probably have never held a knife mm. you know the first things when the black men became free what was given to them was a damn bowie knife so if really? there's anything that is a symbol of freedom Interesting. You know, even I mean, America is a symbol of freedom, but what is a symbol of freedom even within America is a damn Bowie knife. Wow. Who's you actively know? here? Who's actively teaching it today? I think there are quite a few people teaching it, uh, uh, but uh, I guess reputable. As, I guess. Oh man, you can ask me that question. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, all right. All right. Let, <laughs> no, I mean, we uh, ask that question. So who's good? So who's good? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Lots of James Keating. Right? Uh, so I, I'll just say this: there are just two or three people that I've studied with. Yeah, fine. Let's go there. Died. Two of them have died, and the third one, uh, the third one, the one alive is James Keating. And the other two passed. As far as I go, as far as I'm concerned, that is the source of the book. James. So current day status quo: James Keating works for me. Yeah. Okay. So the other two passed. So oh, that's unfortunate. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there are still others, right? There are others who are teaching and then there are others who are still developing their own methods. You're seeing a lot of uh, FMA guys adopting it and saying, ah, this is how we would do it, right? But nothing wrong with it. It's good. You know, it's really good. People are adopting it and working with it, whatnot. That's great. When I talk about the Bowie knife, I'm talking about the the bayous, the southeast, and you know, southeast. coming over to the new frontier lands, or how the Mexican buoy developed that developed in its own particular way, and how that came in, right? Understand, a lot of these people are very well educated. Number one, number two, these were freedom lovers, and they it was not it was not a symbol of slavery and oppression, and we can't judge yesterday's world by today's values, right? And and the fact that. Black men, when they were freed, they were given were a buoy knife. To have one, right, right. Yeah. And what does that tell you? They, hence, they took the name such as Freeman, you know? Yeah. I mean, Jim Keene's name keeps coming up when you hear Bowie. So, I mean, it's, that's not And he, he is, uh, in my opinion, the gold standard. Okay. So, let's just say, God forbid, I mean, when, unfortunately, you know, when James passes on or stops teaching, whatever the case may be, who is going to carry his name? You? Is there, does he have a few other folks that? Um, oh, he's, he's certified. He's certified a bunch of people. You oh, know, okay. his, right. his 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 main protege is a, a gentleman by the name of Robert Langford. Uh, he's been with uh, Uncle Jim for 30, 35 oh, okay. years. So there, there are folks out there then. There are kind of, we'll yeah, there are there are a few folks out there, right? So I, I won't say it's a, a, it's a, it's all gone. There are a few folks, but you're going to have to seek them out. Number one know who to look for, how to look for them, and then go study it. Mm, interesting. I mean, Brian's also studied with Uncle Jim. I'm sure Daddy? it's... My God, that freaking guy. And then Chris <laughs> Nally, you know him. He studied he's, with Oh, he's, he's also trained? All right, Molly Powell, we got a question here from Matthew. Molly Powell, have you ever talked with Lynn Thompson about the buoy? I know he studied and used his resources with cold steel to do research and learn all over. No, I have not talked with Lynn Thompson directly. Uh, Uncle Jim has talked quite a bit with him, uh, but I have not personally talked to. That's Matt, right? No, Matt, I haven't personally talked to Lynn Thompson about it. And I, I've spoken to your dad a little bit about the Bowie knife, and uh, when his book came out, and uh, he and I have discussed it. And uh, but yeah, I'm right. Like Kushner wrote one of the best books on the Bowie knife, right? And uh, I contacted Krishna. I was like, hey, great book. Would love to talk to you. He's like, hey, I don't have time for this, but I'll give you my uh, 100 years of research. He has every newspaper article. Okay, who is this? Krishna. I'll, I'll send you the name of the book. I'm, I'm, I'm okay, gonna... yeah. That would, I, please do. Okay. Slipping, slipping. The, the, the name of the book is slipping me. Uh, but yeah, he basically... Um, uh, he basically gave us his years and years of research, like two gigabits of research on every newspaper article ever done on the oh, Bowie wow. knife, okay. going back to the early 1800s to all his primary research for us to take it forward. Paul, okay. Also, Paul Kirshner. Okay. Yeah, please. Yeah, Paul yeah, I would love to. Uh, got another question for you. Uh, sure. You considered Bill Bagwell a Bowie knife instructor as well or a maker and scholar? 
You can't be a good maker unless you know how to use the damn thing. And he was a scary man. He was a scary man when he would demonstrate uh, the back cut. Bill Bagwell? So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. And and the fact that he could just um, look at you, look at your proportions, and then build the knife to your to your specific body type says mm. a lot. Number one. And number two, uh, the fact that he would teach uh, with Uncle Jim. Okay. All right. That's Please. that's Uncle all Jim lineage. Know. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna look on these cats. Yeah, but, uh, I'm just, now you got me overly curious. You know, like I don't have enough on my plate. For... <laughs> Let me just add one more thing. Um, but uh, so, all right. So back to the event. Like, what, in your opinion, what would deem it, or like, what would be the signature or all telling that it for success? Like, you know, what do you, what, you know, when you leave Sunday night at 10 p.m. and you're closing up the doors, everybody's on their flights going back, what will the measure that of be? I and other participants leave with more intelligent questions than when we walked in. Before you walked in. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. That, that to me will be success. They leave with questions. Okay. They leave with better questions. Better questions. Uh, to investigate and, and they leave with new connections that say, okay, this might be worth looking into. Or going deeper. I got this guy, man. Now yeah. I, I really want to dive into this art. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Man, I mean, that's wow, wow, wow. Yeah, I mean, right, exactly. Man. To me, that is success. So, I mean, uh, the stuff that I do, it's not. <laughs> it's not going to fill halls, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, but no, but it's, you know, attract, yeah. it's going to attract a very specific kind of person. And uh, so that's what it is. Looking back at your prior events, as far as immersion labs and all this, um, again, you know, I know you kind of was kind of stick based. Um, I, I know, I, like, this seems more challenging and difficult. Um, just based on the, all the different countries and all that, the historic context of Spain and all that. Um, is that is that correct? This is the hardest thing I've done. This is the hardest one that you're you're tackling. Okay. Yeah, this is the hardest one. I have one more which is harder than this, oh, but I've been at it for three years now, and hopefully next year I'll do that. And no, I can't talk about it. No, yet. no, no. I was going to even ask. <laughs> uh, that, so this is. Uh, this will be a stepping stone towards that. <laughs> so if this goes like really well, then you know. Is, no, I think there are learnings that come right now, especially see when 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 you when you look. Even if you just say let's study Southeast Asian arts, right? Yeah. Simple enough. Today it's simple enough, but 25 years ago, if you had said Southeast Asian arts, it was like, oh my God, there's so much. Which one do we do? And I think we are in that similar place with a global perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So we are in those early stages of exploring okay what how does this expand all around the world right and uh, so so that's that's the beginning you know so i think i think we are at that initial stage this is hard work uh, for two reasons one trying to pull the logistics of something i mean look it's hard enough for me to coordinate things with my wife for my two kids okay or just like a seminar uh, within your own state let alone like yeah what you're doing yeah now but now try to bring people from five continents and uh, yeah. say, okay, yeah, you yeah. guys all land here at the same time. And, you know, uh, like suddenly I find out this person cannot travel to the United States because he's on a terrorist watch list. No, this is true story. True story. <laughs> true story. Oops. <laughs> I'm like, huh, why didn't you tell me this? Like, yeah, before like, I first contacted you. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, it, it's hard, but it's, it's satisfying because couple of things you know they, they become friends in the process and you know oh sure you're talking to them you're planning with them you're getting information to them you guys are sharing yeah absolutely i'm sure yeah yeah so it's it's hard but uh i don't know man i like it it's it's uh, uh people think um uh some people think i'm just a sucker for pain but might be but it also opens some very interesting doors that would otherwise not open. I commend you. I just think like people say like, you know, on a, on a smaller scale to what you're doing, 
regards to my discussion, you know, like, are, are you, when I first brought the idea to people, you know, are you stupid? <laughs> like, like, what are you, uh, are you sure? You, you, you think you're really going to get people to listen to you and you're going to bring folks on and it's going to be happy, go lucky. But when I look at like the magnitude of what you're doing as far as global, you know, bringing Pete, I mean, I, I yeah, I, I, I can't imagine the workload and, Look, it's it's not just all me, okay? So I I, I want I, I want this to be clear. It's not just all me. Oh yeah, but your spirit. No, no, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. I, mean, I I appreciate what you're saying, but I would be amiss if I did not acknowledge that. Yeah, you got what Mike Belzer? I uh, he's 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 a gold standard, you know, and yeah. he's also coming helping out. But but you have all these other ambassadors when they hear the idea, they're like, first question is, are you fucking insane? And yeah. then they're like, you know what? This is freaking cool. And, yeah, what do you, yeah, I think it's, I, I just commend you and your team. I just think what you guys are doing. I mean, again, nobody's done this in decades, centuries, and look at this, you know, this comprehensive aspect to it as far as the influence and the different countries. And yeah, and I'm just so, you know, thankful to you just to, from the back end, just to research and learn about this stuff and help you with the, um, Whatever it is, I'm gonna be helping you with as far as the, the Latin you know, arts. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, you know, I, it's so neat and educational. It's just, it's captivating. I mean, that, that's what it's about, right? It's about finding those others who have the same kind of madness as you do, yeah. and then together we explore these madnesses. You know, yeah, because, explore these madnesses. <laughs> so I guess yeah, that's what it is. from Mexico, right? I mean, try explaining what you do or I do to a normie. Yeah. Just try. Yeah. So, no, I, again, it's great. Uh, but I gotta get on. I gotta get in contact with you and the guy from Mexico, correct? Yeah. So we'll we'll do that next week, and then we'll Perfect. start you off on that. Okay. I mean that that book that I was telling you from the 1940s. It's already been fully translated. Now we get to the next step, and then finding some of these sources, and uh, we'll get moving. And if there are other guys who really want to work on certain aspects, you know, contact me, and then uh, we'll we'll try and figure something out. But the most important thing is. Like you know, be dedicated, and the, if you say you're going to do something, you bloody well do it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's not. Uh, hey, I'll get to it next week. Yeah, 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 maybe, yeah. maybe then you should do that for yourself. And there, I could connect you with some people there. But uh, there's a particular rhythm to this particular madness that we call Immersion Foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, again, I mean, this is wow. Um, yeah, folks. Um, you, I, I mean, guys, really, if 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 you love the arts and you know whether you're FMA or not, I know a lot of FMA guys. I mean, we all just take a few. I'll just speak like an FMA guy for the moment. Mm. We just take a few things. Oh, this is Spanish. This is Spanish. That. Are you sure? Right? Have you actually played with them? Mm. Have you actually looked at some of the source material, or are we just blabbering hearsay? If somebody right? said it, or yeah, yeah. So so. You know, if you really want to explore those questions, if you really want to see what what that is and what it means, this might be for you. You know, yeah, yeah. I don't have much to sell. This might be for you. you know? No, I mean, uh, I, again, uh, you know, my hats off to you. I salute you for your effort and what you're doing, and kind of, kind of conquering the frontier on this. Um, so, folks, um, I did post. Um, Balea Paul's website, uh, and, uh, and I, get, I certainly can do it again, but it's worth checking out. Um, I mean, what you put together just on that initial website, and uh, I thought was incredibly impressive. And the, the colors just it really just you know, jumps out at you, you know. I see, the thing is, you know, like the way you do little things is the way you do great things, and so many of these people are coming forth for the first time in, mm. in so many ways to put the things out. You have to give them the right respect and show them that hey, this will be handled well, right? Yeah, and right. Trusting us to record this stuff and save it for posterity, mm. they should know that hey, this is going to be handled with respect and with dignity, and it's not just going to be a VHS tape yeah. tossed out somewhere, you know? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, I'm glad we made this happen. Um, this is uh, the comments speak for themselves. At one time, we had close 29 people watching. So this uh, this resonated with people. You know, this resonated. With people. I'm glad. So, and you know what? I mean, again, I 
don't claim to have answers. I just have questions. And then once these questions are answered, I have more questions. Yeah, I think you're being honest. My, my, my hope is, my hope is for me, I just keep getting better and better questions and that fuels me. And hopefully there are others who, who like that and then want to yeah. come explore. I think you're being completely transparent. You're not saying that just by virtue of doing this, now you have all the answers more than anybody else. You're saying that spark questions and for folks to see for themselves or investigate themselves or put the time and the workload. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, anybody that knows, you know, is, is seeing that too. So. Um, but again, I appreciate you coming on. This is wonderful. And uh, obviously we'll be in touch. I, obviously I'm wishing the best of luck with this is, uh, I mean, this is incredible, but um, yeah, you know, I just, wow, 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 man. Labor of love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We got it. Yeah. Did I miss any questions? I don't think so. Oh, you're all right. Well, you're going up Apollo's Wednesday. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm going up Apollo's Wednesday. And yeah. Chris Daly said, Yeah, Uncle Jim is a master's master. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. how did, is Dwight going to have you on as well? I think so. Oh, he will. Yeah, yeah no. Dwight yeah, yeah. I, I think so. I think he was saying he, something yeah, about he's, it. He's usually pretty good. It's, it's kind of, uh, it goes, uh, you know, I, I've kind of, uh, like, I'm studying Paolo and you. For all these years, I've kind of stayed in the background. Yeah. It just feels really weird to <laughs> come and do this and stuff. No, like no, 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 no. And um, if if I have this, if I have to make this work live, and if I want to light that fire of hoplology and find that next generation who's yeah. inspired and wants to do it, well, got to do it. No, I think so I, I appreciate you guys. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. You know. Okay. taking a chance and a risk with me on this and risk. you know indulging me in my madness no, risk. reward you're i mean look what look at what you're diving into and i mean again we had close to 30 people watching at one time so this is this resonates with people they they wanted to hear this you know they want to hear what you're doing they want to hear what you're going to speak on so reward no sure. risk and again I, I want to thank you again you know sincerely from you you know, allow me to be part of this on the back and then I, um, I'm honored. You know what I mean? I don't take anything like that lightly. So H and H, humbled and honored that you, uh, you could have chose, God knows some other people. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Yeah. You'll get frustrated at times, but I promise you it'll be rewarding. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I got good work. Yeah. Good work. I mean, so. and you've dealt with FMA Madness for 359 episodes. You can deal with this. <laughs> no, that, not just the 359 episodes. The ten or so messages oh, every morning, I, mean, I would work to and like, why did he say that? Why did you have or, one? Do you know that's not true? You, you got to cancel Dean. <laughs> that's my what do you mean? So it's not the episodes. It's the I know, no, I, I know you know what I meant, but it's not the episodes itself. It's the fallout from <laughs> <You know>? that. <laughs> the things that don't people don't know about, man. But um, what is your opinion okay. on the book from the New York Ninja guy Ninja who wrote guy. about? Gypsy fighting, Gypsy. <laughs> fighting arts. Uh, are you talking about James Lauriaka? Is that who I'm you're talking about? Yeah, I, yeah I, I think that's what he's talking about. So, um, no comment, man. Yeah. News I've read the book and all else says no comment. I'm looking for the Navajo arts myself. I've been hunting that down for years. Uh, I found, uh, I found uh, three guys who actually make it and the way for me to open the door with them was to buy that expensive blades. And even after I bought that expensive blades, they wouldn't talk about it. Okay. And these are not cheap by any standard. That's not, uh, uh, the contacts, all the contacts that I have, I haven't found anyone doing the old Navaha arts. Okay. That does not mean that it doesn't exist. Uh, but the people in Spain and France and as far as L Lithuania that I found who were actually learned the old craft of how to make the Nava or knives, I mm. haven't found anyone who practices those arts. However, 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 doesn't mean it doesn't exist, number mm. one. Two, there are uh, still living gypsy traditions with the blade, um, uh, with the blade in Italy. Okay, so a possible uh, crossover and influence could be found there. Secondly, most of the traditional Navaha knife makers have somehow mm. ended up in France. So, so, uh, uh, um, so, so that is that. I think. I think my personal opinion. I I haven't seen. 
uh, from my contacts, I and what I have seen, I haven't seen, uh, I haven't seen those arts yet. But that's just one man's opinion, man. You know. Wow, I mean, that's a whole nother gypsy, gypsy, and gypsy, and gypsy with knife. Yeah, I mean, they, 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 uh, like uh, my, my buddy Marco Quarta, who's uh, who's a headmaster of some of the Italian arts. He's he's been researching that, and it's one of the most secretive schools on the planet. We are planning to go down to Italy right before the damn COVID nonsense hit. Oh, so, boy. So, uh, so we will, uh, we will, we will do that, right? I mean, like the Navaha knives are so freaking amazing. You know, it makes that clack, 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 clack sound. And, uh, but the thing that comes closest to the Navaha knife, in my personal opinion, I mean, mm. again, I've never studied the Navaha knife. I've been looking for it for years, but I haven't found it. My personal opinion, there are two arts that come closest to it. Number one, the buoy. Okay. Right. Because the Spaniards did end up in Louisiana, right? right and right. Okay. the length is approximately similar. So when you look at the uh, the length of the blade and the approximate geometry, the the geometry drives the blade geometry drives the movement, right? Mm. So in some ways, I would say that uh, number one is uh, the Bowie knife. The second is the Indian art of Ustra, the Ustra, the Indian the Indian opening blade. Uh, hardly anyone sees it. Uh, I, I've I've worked with the Ustra. There are two, three guys I know who still work with the Ustra. So those are some uh, corollaries to it. But but uh, but finding the Navaha blade in Spain itself or in the surrounding areas, uh, so far it's been a miss. Again, this is three, four of us searching, right? Mm. Uh, um, including some real scholars within the Spanish tradition that have been bugging them about this. They haven't found it. But that does not mean that... Um, it doesn't exist. Uh, the book that you're talking about might very well be a legitimate source, but I don't know. I, yeah. I haven't seen it. That's right. Yeah. 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 But uh, I got it. Yeah. I got it. Unfortunately. But hey, again, I appreciate you coming on. This was fantastic. You know, um, uh, again, I, I do hope folks uh, will video of this event or any other in the past uh, be available. I'm going to guess no. I, I forget. I, I don't know what Brian's talking about. That there, there are guys in the south, but they won't talk to me. Yeah, I'm not. But then I have no idea. What but Rick about. is asking: Will a video of this event or any event in the past that you've held will it be available? Oh, we, we are trying to get it on. There's just some some crazy issues with it, man. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I had uh, I uh, I've been dealing with some personal stuff as well that uh, that had taken me out of the game, but mm -hmm. I'm. I'm coming back in my my hope is not just video of the events but video of all the expeditions we've done uh, that um, as the teachers allow say okay we want to bring this out we bring it out and uh, one of the big things that we want to do is just shine the light on these arts and it's it's a labor of love i'm not i'm not in the uh i'm not in the seminar business nor am i in the video tutorial business uh, i'm in the business of saving these arts so uh uh, some of the instructors don't want that stuff out until they're dead. Mm. Uh, so so we, we're just trying to honor that and make sure that we do that right. Because, you know, it just takes one screw up for that entire decades of work to be destroyed. Yeah, so I hope it's doing it with down, and... But, uh, but, uh, but I, I don't have a thing to say that, hey, watch out for this video coming out for $500. No, you're not doing this for the man. No, everybody knows that. I mean, you're doing <laughs> yeah. the pure love, the passion. You're doing it with integrity yeah. and everybody. Yeah, so. But uh, but uh, <clears throat> awesome. Um, yeah, I gotta uh, I gotta get to my next thing. That, but again, I appreciate you coming on. Um, this is wonderful. And uh, uh, can I answer this one question? Sure. Dean, right. What's he's that? asking, lawyer used Navaha and Piper system. No, uh, not that I'm aware of, and I not that I'm aware of. The I, lawyer. That would have been definitely shared with me by now. And what and and the blade. The blade, the blade dynamics are very different. The kudu yeah. knife well, is heavily uh, kudu. The kudu, yeah, and uh, it's much more, uh, much more uh, silat and much more silat and uh, Zulu rather than Spanish. Yeah, and definitely. It very, very differently. Yeah, very. Yeah. <laughs> so, but... No. All right, man. All I know right, you so got it. Thank you so much. Yeah. 
You did great. I'm glad you. I'm glad we made this happen. Hey, thanks, man. This was uh, this was fun. It made me forget it was, about it it went, for a while. It, it, now I can yeah. get back to my pain and cry. <laughs> no, hey, well, hey, best of luck with that. And let's uh, next week. Let's talk. Let's talk. All right. Thank you. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, just reach out to me on Facebook. And and really, guys, uh, if 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 the event is of interest to you, apply sooner than later. Okay. Yeah. I, I would like to just close on the people and then start the work on trying to fly all these guys from everywhere yeah. <laughs> at the same time and same place. All right. All right. Awesome. Peace out, guys. And uh, Merry Christmas and uh, Happy Holidays. Same to you. Take care. Talk to you next week. Uh, do you... Absolutely. To consider it done. All right. Yep. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye. And that wraps up. Wow. What a great episode. Man, that was uh, something. I wish him the best of luck with that. Uh, yeah, that's a lot, a lot, a lot. But again, just incredible on so many levels. Uh, next episode, 360, will be Wednesday night. Uh, Duran Howard and Tony Parker, uh, students of the late, not the late, oh, late Greg Alon, also GT. So they're coming on Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. They're going to be uh, talking about their journey with them and all that. And plus they're going to be doing demos. Yeah. So check that out. That should be a fun episode with those guys. All right, folks. Thank you for all those that jumped in. And we'll see you Wednesday night, hopefully.